Hey, what's up guys? Bo HD here from PhoneDog.com. Hope you guys are doing well. At Apple's digital WWDC event today, iOS 14 was officially announced, uh, bringing some of the biggest changes we've seen in years Mostly I'm talking about widgets. So technically iOS has had widgets for a while, but they've been isolated to the notification center. Now you can actually add widgets directly to your home screens, just like Android has been able to do for years. It's probably the single most requested feature for iOS that people have been wanting since the early days of the operating system. On Android, I go back and forth between using widgets and not using widgets, but I think for iOS, just the option to have widgets and be able to customize your phone even more than before is is just awesome. So I am all for having widgets on the home screens, even if they will probably be a little bit more controlled than what we find on Android. I, I think this is still a big step forward. Now, with that said, Apple has added a new widget gallery where users can easily add and customize widgets that they want to add to the today view or their home screens. We also have what Apple is calling smart stacks. This is a widget for your widgets that users can place at the top of their home screens, providing a scrollable view of the available widgets on their phone. And the widgets will change based on the time of day or your particular behaviors. So if you commute to work at 8 a.m. every day, it might suggest Apple Maps, or if you arrive home at like 5 p.m. every day, you might see your smart lock app pop up to unlock your front door. And along with that feature, we also have a new app library that's sort of like an app drawer for iOS. What it does is it automatically organizes apps into groups and lists. But since this has its own view now, users can actually hide apps on their main home screens. So essentially, yeah, this app library is an app drawer because it gets you access to all of your main apps organized in these various groups and lists. If you know you decide to hide apps on your home screens, you will still be able to see them in this app library. So it's basically just uh, an app drawer. So once again, we have another highly requested feature coming to iOS that Android has had for years, but uh, it's still great to see because it helps you customize your phone even more and more options equals a better experience. Another new feature coming to iOS 14 is Apple's new system-wide picture-in-picture -picture mode for iOS videos. Videos will hover above apps and can be adjusted in size or collapsed into this side of the display to continue playing in the background. So if you wanna write a text message, but still wanna to listen to the audio of the video you are watching, you can just collapse it off to the side of the screen while you are writing your message. And Siri has been refined to no longer obscure the whole screen of your smartphone when you activate her. Instead, there's just a, a small overlay at the bottom of the display. Apple has also added the ability to send audio messages via Siri in addition to, you know, standard dictated messages in text form. They've also added a new Translate app built into iOS, which will allow users to communicate with others who speak a different language. It works with, I believe, 11 languages and will translate audio in real time and automatically determine which language the person is speaking and which language it needs to translate it into. Apple Messages is gaining the ability to pin important contacts and conversations to the top of the Messages app for quick access to your favorite conversations. We also have uh, new Memoji accessories like a face mask option because, you know, it's 2020 and this has been a crazy year. So of course we have face masks, right? An emoji. There's also a new threaded conversation feature in group chats and mention notifications to ping specific people in the chat that you are in. And Apple Maps can now feature integration with third-party services like All Trails and Zagat. So you can see highly reviewed restaurants in Apple Maps using Zagat, and you can also find like popular hiking trails using All Trails. And Maps also supports cycling and bike riding directions, which takes into account elevation, bike paths, stairs, and roads. Right now, I believe the feature is only in a handful of cities like LA, New York, and a few others, but it will be expanded over time as you know, Apple has time to record more information like if there's stairs in the bike path, really specific information like that. So it'll take some time, but it's that's pretty cool. And if you're an electric vehicle owner, I know Tesla has had this feature for a while built into their systems, but uh, if you like own a Leaf or other electric vehicle, you will now be able to use the app, the Apple Maps app to track the current charge of your car. Uh, it'll factor in elevation and weather to help you, to help give you a very accurate, um, 
view of your range, and it'll also be able to route you to compatible charging stations. And speaking of cars, I don't know if you know this, but Apple has a CarPlay app, and it's been improved to now support custom wallpapers, so that's cool, and also new app categories, parking apps, electrical vehicle chargers, and fast food takeout ordering apps. That's pretty cool. Apple is also adding support for NFC car keys, which is only gonna work for, uh, I believe, a handful of cars at launch, um, but that information is stored in Apple's secure enclave, so it's nice and secure, and that can also be shared with other users to give them temporary access to your car just by using an NFC tag. Or I guess your iPhone too, because iPhones have NFC. Now iOS 14 also includes a new app clip feature. So what this does is it gives you access to little clips or snippets of apps without actually needing to download the full apps. So you'll be able to access like a parking app or a coffee stores reward program without actually having to download the corresponding apps. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the app clips will also work with Apple's new QR code visual codes and NFC to quickly help you launch the app snippets. And one of the last features for iOS 14 that was spotted by 9to5Mac is the ability to set default applications. So now you can change the default mail app to say Gmail and the default browser app to Chrome. You couldn't do that before. So that is awesome and actually a really big feature. Another highly, highly requested feature now coming to iOS. So with that last one, those are some of the biggest new features coming to iOS 14 and some of its associated apps, including Apple Maps and Apple CarPlay. Obviously the, the biggest new feature that I'm most excited for is home screen widgets. This is a missing feature that I've been giving Apple crap about for years now, but now that it's coming, it's just one less feature that Android users can use to make their case for the best mobile OS. So. Yeah, let me know which new feature of iOS 14 you are most excited for in a comment down below. As always, I'm Bo HD from phonedog.com. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.